Hey, Fabio. Hey, boss. What's going on? <laughs> you look a little dejected. Oh, I'm like tired. That, like this, <sighs> like this donkey. <laughs> Why are you so tired? So, so there's 55 LTMs to screen, and I'm looking at every single page. It's taking forever. Why don't you use spectrograms to speed it up? Spectra what? I'll show you. <laughs> Well, let me tell you about spectra and spectrograms. I will first do a little theory. Yeah. And then that'll help you understand mm -hmm. how to use these in practice. So have you ever heard of a Fourier transform? No. The idea is that there's, mm -hmm. it's a very simple idea, actually. It's, it's just that you can, anytime you have a signal like the one on the right, this black complicated curve, mm -hmm. you can always break it into a whole bunch of simple curves um, with different that just are sines and cosines with different frequencies and amplitudes mm -hmm. and maybe shift it a little bit relative to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, the, the thing that does that is called a Fourier transform. And um, it's a way of simplifying, you know, the way that you look at signals. So we'll, we'll take a look mm -hmm. on the next page. It's kind of like a prism, by the way. It's so you know, you can see these these things are different colors. So it's kind of the same idea. If you have passed some white light through a prism, you can break it into these little simple components that are, you know, different frequencies of light. So it's very much, it's a very similar idea. So here's an example here. So you see this, there's a, on the top, there's this black signal, mm -hmm. um, which actually this is a real little segment of an EEG. It's a little more than 30 seconds of a, Mm -hmm. an EEG and something interesting is happening there, right? You can see it changes. Um, over the top of that black signal, there's a red curve. Mm -hmm. And you can see it matches mostly with the black curve, but not perfectly, but it's a it's an approximation to the black curve. Mm -hmm. And actually the way I made that approximation mm -hmm. was just by adding up the little signals in shown in the second panel below, mm -hmm. right? So what I've done here, is I've um, I've taken signals of different frequencies and not mm -hmm. gonna tell you how I chose which frequencies because that's a secret, but okay. um, I also chose the amplitudes, right? And the, and the um, phases of those <laughs> signals mm -hmm. so that they would, when I added them up, they would give me that red signal. So yeah, again, and it's just important to know that it can be done, right? This, this simple collection adds up to that red thing and it's a darn good approximation to the black curve even though it's a pretty complicated curve um and actually the other thing we can do sometimes um so it's kind of hard to look at all these different little signals so what we do instead is we we when we want to say okay you know what are the what are the components of the um little sine waves that make up the approximation to the black signal I, I can plot this thing down below called the amplitude spectrum. And all it is, is just as a function of the frequency of mm -hmm. these different components, um, it's the amplitude. So, you know, how far it is from in, let's say in, in microvolts from the peak to the trough of each of those waves. And so you can see, you know, there's, there's um, a lot of, you know, high amplitude component uh, around the 15.4 Hertz, which, corresponds to that juicy sine wave at 15.4 hertz up above. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, down at low frequencies, let's say like 5.6 hertz, right? The amplitude spectrum shows very, very low amplitude, meaning there's almost no, you know, wiggly parts wiggling at that frequency. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a really nice, easy way to look at, you know, what are the parts um, or component sine sinusoids, we'll call them, just so I don't have to distinguish sines and cosines. This, mm -hmm. What are the component sinusoids? Mm -hmm. um, like at, at what are their amplitudes as a function of frequency? And then we call that the, the spectrum. Um, okay. Actually, just for the future slides, um, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll, we'll actually square them instead of look at their amplitude and then we'll, and then we'll take the log <laughs> of mm -hmm. the power or which is to say we'll put them on a, a log scale or a, sometimes called a decibel scale. And that just makes them a little easier to look at. So, okay. So now we're going to look um, at some 
detailed properties of these of the you know how we approximate signals using sign sinusoids. So um, on the left hand side, I've just got a really really simple signal this time, right? It just looks like a bell curve, mm -hmm. and um, I've got you know the a black signal underneath, and then a red signal on top, which is an approximation to the black one. Now the way I constructed it is by taking these components here. Mm -hmm. In this in this example, I'm taking uh, for each frequency, I'm taking the sine and a cosine, uh, and so mm -hmm. um, two signals at the same frequency. And what you can see is that you know the if you look at the amplitude spectrum or the thing in the middle, mm -hmm. you can see that most of the components have very low frequencies, like 0 0.2, 0 0.4 hertz. Beyond 0.4 hertz, like almost most of the components have such small amplitude they don't contribute much at all. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question here. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, shoot. What what would happen if we tried to make this bell curve narrower, like pointier? What would happen to would what would we need in terms of the components mm. you know, as opposed to what we're seeing here? I think we'll need more of these ones at the bottom. If we make it narrow, it gets really pointy. Mm. And so um in order to make, you know, we're gonna add up some curves and they have to kind of, you know, um reinforce each other or or interfere with each other and kind of average out to zero mm -hmm. in a special way so that to make that sharp turn and so to make a really sharp turn you're going to need so, at least some components that have really high frequency right that oscillate mm -hmm. quickly um, so that you can you know use those at least to to sculpt that that point got it and so so the important point is going to be that you know for so sometimes we're talking about background activity in the eeg Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then you know, you can think of well, the background is made up of these oscillating like waves, like sine waves. Mm -hmm. But when we just have an event like a discharge like this, mm -hmm. where, where it's not repeating, mm -hmm. and we want to approximate it using sine sines and cosines, mm -hmm. well, we need a high some high frequency components just to reproduce the shape, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. so there's two kinds of different cases. If we have a complicated background that has lots of component frequencies, we might need high frequency things because of that. Mm. Or if there's a shape that's very pointy, we might need high frequency parts because of that. So Got we'll it. see this when we get to real examples. Mm. Um, okay. So let's see if you were right. We can go to the next slide. Okay. Where I actually make it narrow. There we go. It's narrower. And then just just to make it easier, if it's a flat line, because then you just need almost zero hertz. Right. If it's if it really was a flat line, you would you would just need zero hertz. You need you need yeah. a, a flat line to approximate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So maybe that's a way to, to think about it if you don't know too much about these things. Yeah. Find the extreme. So it's flat, you need almost flat, so very close to zero hertz. But then if it's really pointy, you need faster frequencies just using that logic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And notice that the amplitude spectrum, if we go back and forth, right, it got wider. Mm -hmm. right? It got wider. Right. So let me let me just think through this, this the amplitude spectrum here. So the original example we had more of the lower frequencies, and then the second example, the pointier example, we're using more faster frequencies, so we have more amplitude for those two. Right. Okay. Yep. Got it. Oh wow, this is uh this will hurt for sure. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, so so what happened here? We so, made it really pointy. What happened? Yeah, so we need even faster frequencies to make the curve there. Yeah. Got yeah. it. And got then it. here you can see the faster frequencies. We're using them, so we've got some amplitude over there too. Yeah. And actually, you notice that some of the um, lower frequencies kind of got damped down a little bit. We're not using them as much anymore. Mm -hmm. I see. Because we don't have that slowly turning part mm -hmm. yeah that's right now i just want there's this is one little pet peeve of mine um or mm -hmm. you know important point so we we some i sometimes people talk about um when they're talking about spectra of signals they mm -hmm. call them the fft of signals or the fast fourier transform which is a mm -hmm. algorithm or you know computer program that calculates the the you know the, the amplitudes of the sines and cosines mm -hmm. uh, involved but that's actually not quite what we really want to do. 
-hmm. What we actually want to do is do something like that and then smooth it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we usually call that process, you know, we call it spectral estimation. Mm -hmm. So, so the, here's the reason, the idea. And, and um, so let's look at this. Let's look at this signal at the top, that black kind of complicated signal, mm -hmm. right? So um, this signal was actually created by as a random, you know, sample mm -hmm. from some underlying spectrum that I actually know because I made it. Mm. <laughs> and it's, it's actually this thing in the curves below in red, right? Mm. And you can see what we're doing is we're making a series of different approximations to that underlying red thing. Mm -hmm. um, so the blue curves are just are estimates of the spectrum of the estimated from the black curve. But you can see that the top, the one in B is really noisy. It's not a very good estimate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, too much, too much noise. Mm -hmm. C is a really pretty good one. Mm -hmm. D is maybe the best one. Um, and then E is sort of too smooth, right? You can see mm -hmm. E no longer captures those two little peaks. Mm -hmm. And so, so actually what we have to do, what we do when we, when we actually estimate a spectrum is we, we calculate the, something like the Fourier transform or the, and, and then from that, the amplitude spectrum, but then we do some smoothing and we have to figure out what the right amount of smoothing is for you know the signal of interest. So anyway, that's all going to go on in the background. We won't talk about it anymore, but but that's the reason um, I don't like to. We, we you shouldn't really call what we're doing computing the FFT. You know, it's it's actually spectral estimation. We're we're trying to understand what kind of underlying you know structure there is under underneath this data uh, mm -hmm. that we're seeing. And you can think of that underlying structure as maybe, you know, the some part of the brain that if you keep on observing it in the same state, like say, you know, whenever it's awake, it'll generate signals that have similar properties, even though they're not exactly the same, right? And so you want to under you know, want to estimate the underlying like sort of properties of the signal, like its average, you know, frequency. If there's some special oscillation in there, you want to estimate the the frequency of that oscillation, for example. Got it. All right. Okay. So spectral estimation. All right, so now we're going to move from spect those spectra mm -hmm. um, to spectrograms, mm -hmm. right, which is uh, that's why we have these rainbows in here today because we usually use kind of rainbow colors for the spectrograms. Mm -hmm. um, so so let me explain what's going on here. So let's look at the top. Well, first let's look at the middle one. So there's this complicated signal. Mm -hmm. In this case, the signal is something, you know, you can see it's more than 140 seconds long. And actually, you can't appreciate it very well, but in the middle of this signal, you can't appreciate it because it's so squished, but there's a seizure happening in there. Hmm. Right? This is why we don't usually look at EEG data on this scale. We usually look at 10 or 15 seconds at a time, mm -hmm. you know, rather than 140 seconds, um, yeah. so we can tell what's going on. But all right, so what we're going to do now, look at the first little blue rectangle, right? So I'm going to, if I take a little sliver of this signal, mm -hmm. I can compute from that little tiny segment in the inside the blue window, mm -hmm. the spectrum. Okay. And so up in the upper left corner, I'm mm -hmm. calculating the spectrum at that point in time for that little segment. Okay. Then if I move onward, when I'm like into the seizure um, and, and look at that second blue rectangle, the spectrum looks, you know, is up there, it looks very different, right? Now it's got, well, it's got these new peaks around mm -hmm. maybe, you know, uh, looks like around three Hertz and then again around 10 Hertz. Mm -hmm. So it's got some new peaks and it's got overall the total, you know, power or mm -hmm. amplitude of all the different parts is mm -hmm. higher in general. Mm -hmm. So it's very different, right? And then if I move onward after the seizure ends, mm -hmm. you know, the spectrum looks different again, although it's starting to look, you know, close to what it, like it looked before the seizure happens, it's returning to baseline. So what we say about the, the signal is it's not station, it's not staying still, it's, it's spectrum is changing over time. Mm -hmm. So um, what we need to do if we want to understand it um, using spectra uh, is we, we want to, we may have to make a series of spectra. And mm -hmm. so we do that you, like we do in the plot down below. So mm -hmm. what we're showing here is at every little window of time, and usually the window, you, you could pick a window for EEG that's, say, around four seconds wide, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so you take a little, every four seconds, you take a little window, 
of mm-hmm. the signal, you calculate its spectra, mm-hmm. and you and you plot it like like it's shown here. So in this case, what we're seeing is on the x-axis is the point in time mm-hmm. in the you know in the EEG signal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, the first you know blue 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 rectangle is at about twenty seconds, mm-hmm. and then the the y-axis tells you what frequency we're looking at in the in the spectrum, mm-hmm. and then the color shows you the power, mm-hmm. right? So the color mm-hmm. indicates the power. And um, mm-hmm. like I said before, it's this time the power uh, or the color mm-hmm. is shown on a decibel scale. So mm-hmm. it's it's the amplitude spectrum squared, and then you take the log of that. Okay. Um, the reason you do that is that if you don't, then it's um, you mostly just see the low frequency power because it tends to be way bigger than the higher frequency power. That's so just... taking the log makes them a little bit more comparable, so you can see everything. Gotcha. Um, okay. But anyway, and then so you what you can now you can see how the EEG spectral you know spectrum changes as a function of time, and we call that picture the spectrogram. Mm-hmm. And what's right. what's nice? I mean, yeah, you can actually. Whereas the the you know the time signal is like a big mess, you can hardly see anything. Mm-hmm. In the spectrogram, it's really easy to see yeah. something really interesting is happening. Right, you can see. Yeah. Actually, you'll come to recognize this as pretty clearly a seizure. This mm-hmm. pattern that we see here, this it, we call this a flame. Mm-hmm. How it kind of like goes up like a triangle, like a like a fiery triangle. Fire. Okay. All right. Just to make sure I understand here, then. So yeah. looking at the first box, the first blue box. Um, up there, we have a lot of lower frequencies. So looking at the spectrogram, we're going to have more power around the lower frequency side of it, right? Yeah. So right here. So it makes mm-hmm. sense. So I got that. And then in the middle, there's a lot of higher frequencies, even up to 20 hertz. So yeah. again, looking at that same time point here in the spectrogram, there's more power extending up to the higher frequencies, right? Yeah. And then actually just really quick, we so yeah. remember if you look at the upper le, upper middle, you know, spectrum, there's a peak. There's I think there's like three or four peaks. Mm-hmm. So one peak is at low frequencies, it's around, yeah, right there. Mm-hmm. And you can see that down in the spectrogram, right? You can see it around three hertz, that big little fat worm there. Mm-hmm. That's, there. that's that first peak. And then there's another peak at around 10, and you can kind of see that too, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Right there. And yeah. then there's a smaller peak around 20, and you can also see that. Huh, is that this one here maybe? Yeah, let me see, I can. I think I can draw. Okay. Can I, let's see. Um, I hadn't even noticed the different shades of red here, but you're right. You see, I don't know if you see my drawing, it's not very good. It's, let's see here, I can make it red. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Wait. Is it way? Here it comes. Okay. Okay. Wait. Why is it not? Mm-hmm. Hey, let me draw. <laughs> there we go. There's one. One of the bands. That's the 20 hertz one. Uh huh. Here's another one, and here's the other one. So at, in this, at this, actually, you can see that it's dynamic, right? This seizure uh-huh. is evolving. So the where that peak is actually, if we followed it in time, it's moving down. <laughs> Uh-huh. The other one's moving down, but at this particular snapshot, it's it looks like it's around three, and then maybe around ten, and then around twenty. Got it. It's like got we it. see up above. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I was I was missing out. This is great. <laughs> yeah. So this this really this is uh this is why we use spectrograms. They they mm-hmm. let you see things at in a um, on a longer time scale.